All right, welcome back. Today we're continuing our Let's Learn ABA series with discontinuous measurement. Discontinuous measurement is the sister to continuous measurement. It's used in different circumstances. It's not as accurate, but it still has its place in ABA as both RBTs and BCBAs. So if you're looking for our RBT materials, check out rbtexamreview.com. If you're looking for our BCBA materials, check out bcbastudy.com. Other than that, questions, comments, let us know. Work hard, study hard. Let's learn ABA. Discontinuous measurement. In a nutshell, it measures a sample of behavior. If we were to say have a three-hour session, if we are measuring behavior for the entire three hours, we're using a continuous measurement. If we were only to measure behavior for 20 minutes out of those three hours, that would be a discontinuous measurement. It has its time. It has its place. But it's clearly not as accurate as measuring something continuously. Types you need to know, interval recording, partial and whole, and then time sampling, momentary, play check, or planned activity check. First things first, partial interval recording. If the behavior happens at any point, picking an interval, or you're picking a sample of time, you're breaking it into intervals. During each interval, if the behavior occurs, no matter how long or how short, it counts as a response. Partial interval recording tends to overestimate behavior because if you have 10 or 20 second intervals, if that behavior occurs for even a second during each of those intervals, the data is going to indicate that that behavior occurred for the full time. So it can easily overestimate behavior if you aren't careful. Good to use when resources with time are low. Good to use when you have to deal with multiple students. And it's good for decreasing behavior. If a behavior is happening too much, you put it on a partial interval, and we're trying to get it to not occur at all. Our example, let's say we have 30 seconds of recording. So we have a sample of 30 seconds. We're breaking that 30 seconds into 10-second intervals, so three seconds. We have 1 to 10 seconds, 11 to 20 seconds, 21 to 30 seconds. Data points, simply asking, did the behavior occur? Yes or no. 11 to 20 seconds, did it occur? Yes or no. 21 to 30 seconds. Did it occur, yes or no? Simple as that. Do not overcomplicate interval recording and momentary time sampling. Partial interval recording, did it occur at all? Yes or no? If it did, it's a response. If it didn't, it's a no response. Whole interval recording along the same lines, but if the behavior happens the entire time. Now, instead of just needing to happen for a split second, it has to occur throughout the entire interval. So if the target behavior happens during the entire interval, you count it as a response. It tends to underestimate behavior because the behavior has to happen for significantly longer to count as a response. So if I have a 20-second interval and my behavior only occurs for 18 seconds, the behavior did occur for 18 seconds, but, my, but the data is going to indicate that it did not occur at all. It tends to underestimate behavior. Good to use when resources to time are low. Good to use for multiple students. Good for increasing behavior because the behavior is going to need to occur for an extended period of time to count. You can see how partial and whole complement each other, but at the same time serve very different purposes. If we look at our, at our example, again, 30 seconds of recording data. We're breaking, we're breaking it into 10 second intervals. Interval 1, 1 to 10. Interval 2, 11 to 20. Interval 3, 21 to 30. Our data point, we are asking ourselves, did it occur the entire interval, 1 to 10 seconds? Yes or no. Did it occur the entire interval, 11 to 20 seconds? Yes or no. Did it occur the entire interval, 21 to 30? Yes or no. So you see, you're going to get very simplistic views of behavior. A lot is happening within 30 seconds. When we look at our data sheet, it's only going to be three data points, not really telling the full picture, giving us an idea. Discontinuous measurement, again, has its place, which is not going to be as accurate as continuous measurement. Momentary time sampling. If the behavior happens at the end of the interval. Partial interval, we would look, did the behavior happen at all? Whole interval, did the behavior happen the entire interval? Momentary time sampling, did the behavior happen at the end? Momentary time sampling is great if you cannot continuously observe your learner. Meaning, if I have a 30-second interval, for 29 seconds, I can go do other things. 
Only at 30 seconds do I need to check in to see if the learner is engaging in the response or not. In other words, if the target behavior happens at the end of the interval, record a response. It can overestimate or underestimate depending on when you catch the learner, either engaging or not engaging. Some sav savvy learners will manipulate momentary time sampling and intentionally skew the data because they know when the interval's up. You have to be cautious for that. Good to use when resources or time are low. Good to use for multiple students. Our example, 30 seconds of recording, 10 second intervals. 1 to 10 seconds, 11 to 20 seconds, 21 to 30 seconds. So, 1 to 10 seconds, data point. Did it occur at the end of the interval? At 10 seconds, yes or no. So for the other 9 seconds, you're not worried about. 11 to 20, did it occur at the end of the interval? At 20 seconds. Other 9 seconds, not worried about. 21 to 30, did it occur at the end of the interval? At 30 seconds, yes or no. Other time, other 9 seconds, not worried about. So, Momentary time sampling, good for when you can't continuously observe the learner, good when you need to do other things and you're only worried about the end of the interval. And then finally, play check or the planned activity check, the long lost sibling of discontinuous measurement. Play check, just like momentary time sampling, just for groups. In other words, at the end of each interval, Check each person in the group to see if they're engaged in the response. You're going to run it exactly like you run a momentary time sampling check, except you're going to do it for the entire group. Again, can overestimate or underestimate. Good to use when resources or time are low. Of course, good to use for multiple students. It's intended to use for multiple students. I've used it, let's say, for a group of five, right? We let them do their thing. I'm away doing other activities or whatever I'm doing. 30 seconds, I look up and look at all five and mark each one for a data point. So you can see discontinuous measurement has its place. That allows me to take data on five kids at once. Is it going to be as accurate as individually tracking each of them? Probably not, but it is a viable solution. So 30 seconds of recording, 10 second intervals. You notice just like whole in, or momentary time sampling, one to 10, did it occur? 11 to 20, did it occur at the end of the interval? 21 to 30. Did it occur at the end of the interval? So let's not make this harder than it is, right? Okay, discontinuous measurement. What you need to know. Less accurate than continuous. Good when you don't need to measure for an entire session. Good when resources or time is limited. And good for groups. Partial interval. Does the behavior occur at all during the interval? Whole interval. Does the behavior occur the entire interval? Momentary time sampling. Does the behavior occur at the end of in the interval? And then play check. Does the group behavior individually occur at the end of each interval? All right. Thanks for watching. Check out bcbastudy.com for our BCBA materials, rbtexamreview.com for our RBT materials. Questions, comments, please let us know. As always, work hard, study hard. See you soon.